On today's episode of Watch Jargo, Josh looks at a distributor and I connect wires to things. Probably the wrong things. What is going on guys? I am Watch Jargo and like I said, I am here with Josh from the Fractured Rooster and his 33 Ford Coupe. It's actually a 33 fraud. Uh, 30, it, is a, it actually is a 33 fraud. The, the tag's going to say 33 FROD. Oh my gosh, that's an amazing tag. It's good. Don't steal it. Yeah. <laughs> Nobody steal it on the internet for sure. But the idea behind that is this is a factory five kit built 33 Roadster and it looks awesome. 33 coupe. You guys already know what's going on with it. We've talked about it on the channel before. 383 stroker under here. It's a, a blueprint engines build with, uh, you know, vintage air, electric power steering, everything under the sun, and it just looks perfect. But it's been sitting here for a very long time. So today, we are gonna try to get it running again. Now, if you guys remember, originally we had this thing going, and it was on the old Professional Products Power Ejection 3. And of course, this is a fully dead Power Ejection 3. We probably need to put it in the trash at this point. But the good one went on to the uh, rock bouncer over here. So that thing is rocking and rolling again. It starts right up. And this thing is getting a Holly Sniper 4150. Yep. So this is Josh's old sniper off his Mustang and it should be ready to go. But we have to get all these wires out, all that good stuff and start wiring this thing up to switch away from the power ejection and onto the Holly. Now the Holly will run way better. The thing about the power ejection is no matter what we did, it could not be tuned. Uh, Josh would add <coughs> AFR corrections to it. All kind of, you pretty much tried everything tuning it. And no matter what happened, it would not change the wide band sitting at like 14.3, right? I don't remember the number, but it, it was too rich all the time. All the time. It just ran pig rich, and no matter what you told it to do in the tuning software, <laughs> it just said no. <laughs> Never cared what we wanted. And the Holly, of course, does not have that problem. We have these on basically every car in this building, and they all work great. We're here to have another success story today. <laughs> that should be their motto. Holly Sniper, success stories. Success story. <laughs> so all we got to do is hook up all these wires, uh, mostly just power, the distributor, and uh, what, ignition, coil input. We should be home free. So we got to hook up a bunch of stuff to the HEI, and there's a rat's nest of wires that I got to sort out here. Wait, there's more wires? CG B plus in the back. What else you got over there? That's it. Oh, and you just okay. have a tack and a battery on the front. Oh, okay, okay. And then we're missing the connector that went to that, right? No, it's just two spades. Oh, cool, cool. And they're already spaded. Sweet. And they're hanging here somewhere. All right, well, this might not be that hard. I really just need power. And uh, we got some uh, coil signal positive and tack or something. Crank signal positive, coil signal positive. you'll have to tap into the tack sensor to run the coil wire. That makes sense. We usually use the uh, Holly distributors the HyperSpark, stuff like that. But today mm -hmm. we're going old school with HEI and we've never had to do one of those before. Yeah, and that's, you know, this one's not locked out. Oh yeah, so it's got the timing advantage. So it'll have the timing. So unfortunately we won't be controlling timing today. Nope. But I will in the future certainly lock this out because that's an incredible feature. You don't have one curve anymore. You yep. have whatever curve you want. Absolutely. And you can throw timing anywhere you want. And the other thing about that is the Power ejection technically has timing control, but I don't think the timing control ever worked. I think we were kind of fighting ourselves because the distributor wasn't locked out. <laughs> that so, makes sense. Yeah, yeah. and yeah, we get to figure it out. Well, let's hop in here and start hooking things up. This thing has been sitting for a long time. A year since we put a battery in. Yeah, a year. And uh, the battery's dead, of course. So we've got the charger on it and everything's out. We're just gonna try to get it going as fast as possible. Yeah. Charger's catching up. Hopefully we've got uh, some power and we start testing things here in a few. We are inside the beast here and we are powering everything up to do a quick test and see if our fuel system is gonna work and if there's any leaks. All right, are you ready? Yep. Load it up, it's returning. I heard some air bubbles pop through. There's a lot of bubbling going on back here. It's hissing. It's gotta be good. Well, that's good news. Shutting the fuel down. It wouldn't be a complete build without the most important thing. <laughs> We've got hood struts right here to help open this hood up. So we pulled the Holly back off to actually see if we could fit this giant spacer in there. 
But now we've decided not to run the spacer because there's not enough hood clearance. And speaking of hoods, we're gonna do the hood struts as this thing goes back on. So the wires are all hooked up, spark plug wires. Um, where did I put mine? You got it on the nuts right there? Yeah. Ah, the throttle cable, bro. that's fancy. So Josh got an adjustable throttle cable bracket to fit the Holly, and it is super fancy. So you can put the throttle cables wherever you need. And what, is that the fast piece? Mm-hmm. Okay, cool. Fast builds this piece just for the Holly. Ready to go. So it's gonna get rid of this mount here. You guys can see that it's just an L bracket with a hole in it. The new hood struts are installed and I wanna give you guys a quick little after action report from the old ones. Here are the old ones, of course. And we'll set them here on the Holly. And <laughs> they are gone, fully gone. Bleh. All right, well, that's an improvement <laughs> for sure. Yeah. You had to pull the drive shaft? Yeah. Oh. Drop the tail shaft. Oh yeah, just because of how it's set up, I see. Well, speaking of dropping the drive shaft, the transmission had to be dropped for us to do the Holly Sniper. And that's not really true. That's not that's not the whole story here. Uh, what happened was this thing had a like a low car TV cable on it. As you guys can see, it's right there. And this TV cable is what makes the transmission kick down when you step on the throttle. And that thing was poorly adjusted and never really worked right. So when you wanted the transmission to shift gears, you had to do it manually uh, on the shifter in the cabin. So if you were gonna get on the throttle, you needed to downshift one or two gears, depending on how many gears you needed, so you could you know, get the power delivery where you wanted it and not lug the engine. So Josh bought a brand new TV cable that's super nice. It's not like the low car one, it's a modern cable and it has the adjustment that slides and it fits in that brand new throttle cable bracket so much nicer it's it's like a very clean factory looking setup now and the transmission is going to downshift like it should and if it doesn't all he's got to do is pop the connector out slide it put it back in and it's good to go so a ton of progress now we got to get this drive shaft back in it needs a half twist yeah, and he's forward yeah forward. he does need to go forward more ah oh, you got it oh, it's all tied up on the sound didn't it? you want me to yeah. there you go grab my yoke got the yoke for you all you got to do is get the, uh... <laughs> I got the yoke, you get the other thing. Oh, there it locked in. Nice. So the U-joint's back in. It's ready for some caps. And this thing is back together. Transmission mount's still out. A lot had to happen to get this TV cable in here in reality. Pretty crazy. Look at that starter. To get it in there blindly. Yeah, the TV cable is right here and the floor on this car covers what would be accessible on a GM vehicle. So while you can see the TV cable and touch it, it's right there, you cannot really do any of the work because you have to reach inside the pan just a little bit to connect the cable. Aluminum on the floor pan is razor sharp. Oh, fun. Did you cut your hands up? I did not. I don't know how. I figured. Once you get a bunch of transmission fluid on your hands, it makes them slippery <laughs> and then you don't cut your fingers up. That's, That's just how true. it works. All that's really left now is wiring the Holly. We had the battery on the charger all night. This thing should start. So we just need to add, just add power. That's really where we're at at this point. Everything and, else? You know, while we get in the air, we could do the fuel pump correctly. Oh yeah, we're gonna wire the fuel pump because previously you had to flip on a switch and now the Holly will control it and prime it, do all the stuff we want. I hope that fuel pump puts out enough pressure. I think it does. It'll be all right. I don't know if it's a 30, like a 35 or a 58. This is the old fuel pump controller right there. We're gonna switch that up, let the Holly take over. After yesterday, we got that TV cable installed and we have been wiring away under here. You can see we're coming down with the harness. We've got a whole relay right here that's gonna end up being the fan relay because it previously just had a switch to turn on the fans. Now the Holly is gonna control the fans and it also had a switch to turn on the fuel pump. This was a very manual car, <laughs> that's, that's for sure. So this wire here that runs along the brake line all the way to the back is our new fuel pump control and we just spent a ton of time up in here rewiring everything around the fuel pump there were butt crimps all over the place so we've simplified all that and we've got good grounds up to the original fuel pump wiring we've got weather packs uh, where they need to be this thing looks way better so now all that's really left to to start it we just need these two and for the fan we need this one so another hour or something like that, we'll have this thing all wired up and ready to go. And you won't have to do any work at all. Turn the key and drive it. <sighs> Many hours later, the wiring on this thing is done. I did a little bit of artwork in here. I'm very excited about it. 
Look at those grounds. Look at those chassis grounds right there. They come off of like perfect terminations and the routing is just all sneaky up there behind everything. The sniper is in. I didn't do that, that's just hanging out. So there's a little bit more cleanup to do. We still have to finish up the fan control, but everything else should be done. So Josh is inside reprogramming the sniper. Hold on. <laughs> sniper, man. It's definitely not hyper spark. I think it's coil negative. Coil. Let's take a gander. It does say that both of these diagrams are coil negative. And of course we're running HEI. So you should be exactly that coil negative. Writing the program. Writing program. Done. There's one thing I'm a little concerned about here. What is the pink wire? Okay, pink, switched ignition. Good deal, we should be okay. Must remain powered during cranking. We don't know. Startup, fuel pump prime. Should hear squirt. She squirted. It sure did. It looks like you're good. Okay. I think we're gonna put it down. I need to tighten that distributor just a little bit. Good call. And the other thing is, you guys, look at this fast bracket for the throttle cables. How clean is that? The old one was just an L bracket with two not great cables coming out of it, and now it's just so nice. Pump sounds strong with all this new wiring. That was a lot of fuel. <laughs> you ready to try this? Yeah, go for it. Clear prop. She tried. It did try. When the what? When we're not cranking, are we losing spark while we're cranking? We shouldn't be. Is the Holly rebooting? Because it's switched ignition is the disc. Seems out. like it, it sputters when you let off the key. Nah. All right, trying again. Oh yeah. I mean, at least it's getting tag signal. We know it's all pretty solid there. Turn it a little bit. Yep. How much you turn it? Mm, 10 degrees. Huh. Cool. Eight degrees. That sounds like a lot of degrees. 8.3. Trying again. That's very technical of you. <laughs> it sounded like it was popping a little. Yeah. Again. We're getting, we're getting tax signal, that's for sure. You think it's 180 out or something? It could be 180 out. Yep. But it would be backfiring. It would, it should be backfiring. Try that. Okay, try it again. Oh, that was pretty good. And the tack in here works too. The Holly is feeding it. Nice. So we're running this tack off of the Holly's tack output. So we have this thing all set up. There it was. You're super close. One more adjustment. Better. We do not have our wideband, and I would expect us to have that right now. So that's a bit of an issue. We're going to need AFR. There it goes. Better, better. 900 RPM. We're getting there. Join in on the action. Look at that. Oh, yeah. It's alive again. Back works, oil pressure works, water tip. I don't know if that works yet. This is going to fix all the problems with this car. It's going to be awesome. What's up? We have no wideband. AFR 35.6. Let's take sensors. No wideband. We could move it to the other wideband. Let's we try it. Too. Yeah. Okay. Both of our wideband sensors are dead on the 33. So there was one in there that we've been using on an Innovate and we know that one's actually good. So that one's kind of weird. And then we have another one that we pulled off the Mustang when we put the sniper on it because we put our brand new one on the Mustang. So now we have no brand new O2 sensors. Luckily, O'Reilly's keeps the old 17025 Bosch sensor in stock. So we are headed there now 
to go pick up a sensor and put this thing back together as fast as possible. Mount up, let's ride. <laughs> sorry, sorry, he's a silent killer. <laughs> but deadly. We made it just in time. They close shortly. Let's go grab this wide band. Wide band sensor acquired. It's awesome to have stuff like this in stock. They have two of them. And uh, I mean, truly, this is like the part every car guy needs. It's not really one you see in a lot of cars. So pretty excited we got it done in the middle of the night. We should have bought them both. Is that what you're saying? <laughs> you, you know that it's going to burn out. Like, <laughs> wideband sensors just, they burn out, especially in performance cars. So, uh, we should have bought both. Yeah. I've, since I've got one in everything I drive. Yes. At, from every Prius. single car we drive has a Holly Sniper. So, we have like 20 of these sensors at the shops. So. And the new wideband sensor is going in. Obviously, it just takes two seconds to swap those out. Nothing like a car where you can actually access the side of the engine while you're sitting outside it. <laughs> All right, try number three. Heating, good deal, look at that. What happened? Well, the car already runs way better on the Sniper and I just have a few little buttoning up things to do like the fan control and things like that and we should have it running right and we'll take it out for a drive sometime after that. Uh, we're gonna finish figuring out our wideband situation there while we're seeing that 35.6 and why the Innovate wasn't working either. So. Uh, for the night, we are done with this car. But that's what it took to get it completely off the power ejection, get the sniper on it, and make it look really good with some cool parts. I'll try to throw the links in the description below, the Bosch wideband and that fast throttle bracket that is definitely one of the coolest ones I've ever seen. It really lets you configure the throttle cables however you want, super easily. So, that's your update on the 33 Ford. I think we'll have it completely wrapped up this weekend because there's a car show this weekend on the Air Force Base, so I think I'm going, I'm gonna be judging, and Josh might be taking something, I don't know what yet, and uh, I'm probably gonna take the Z06 since it's still here, or I'll be working on the job, I don't know. We're trying to figure out our game plan for the weekend. That is it for today, guys. Thank you so much for watching. Don't forget to head on over to shop, watchchairgrow.com for cool shirts just like this, and please like, share, subscribe, do whatever you wanna do, and I will talk to you next time. We spent so much time fixing wiring in this car and it must be a hundred times better and there's still more to go. I know it's a brand new build, but we are cleaning up wiring like crazy. Honestly, just the improvements from having to turn on the fuel pump and then having to turn on the fan manually, that's a, that's a big improvement. You gotta admit it. We got a fun one for you guys today. These uh, train crossing gates have been down for a little over an hour at this point. And I think trains have come and gone and they're just staying down. So I get to sit here and watch people just go around them, which is super awesome. So like they'll pull up. This person may not be that good at driving, but the last guy was here for like three seconds and went. We don't have Amtrak here. If you see train gates down and there's no train for miles, you're probably safe. Look at that, this guy knows how to do it. Pull up, look for a train, and go whenever you want. This is not legal advice. No, you're not allowed to do this. Ford man, good dude, made it through. Josh, also making it through.